Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Home Geekery. And of course, I'm Bill Casanelli, and this is my wife, Teresa. Hello. And we talk about all things geeky with a parenting family angle, usually. Uh, let's see, the first thing we're going to talk about today is a game that was sent to us by GMT Games, Leaping Lemmings. We mentioned it briefly in our last show. And um, what I'm going to do is explain how the game works, and I'll show you how the pieces work and how the game flows, then we'll come back and I'll tell you what we think of it. Ice cold lemonade. Okay, and this is Leaping Lemmings uh, set up. Now, each player starts with their lemmings at the starting line, and basically here's how the, the game works. You've got Hungry Eagles, one right there, one right there, the red one. Her name is Ruby, and the blue one, it's right here. His name is Steven Jr. <clears throat> now they're circling. They, they have a little area here where they circle, and the blue one has it here. First player goes. These are the Eagle Dice. I love the feel of these wooden light dice. They feel really good in my hand. You roll the dice. Like here, we've got a 2 for the red and a 1 for the blue. The red one, you move the red eagle 2. Now, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise, but you can't do both. You can't go clockwise and then counter. You see, you can't go 1, 2. So you move him 2 spaces, and then the blue one would move 1. Now, if one of them had, like it says there, hover, that particular eagle wouldn't move. Now after the eagles have moved, <clears throat> you draw a movement card. In this case, three. So, starting with the player who did the eagle movement first. Let's see, it was me, the red one. I'll move in hexes. You can only move forward. You can't go backwards. And once during your move, you can go sideways. So, if I wanted to move three, I can pick anywhere from the start and go one, two, three. Next, we'll talk about the hexes that contain bushes. These cost two movements to go in, and if you're in a bush hex, and the eagle lands in that area where he controls the zone, if you're in that bush hex, you're safe. Now, if you're not, let's say my guy was not in the bush hex, he would be eaten, and he gets put in the eagle chow pile. Now, you can also land on other players. If you had a pile of lemmings, let's say the red one was on top. The last one on there is the one on top. Now, this makes it for an interesting um, strategy because the person under cannot move. Now, he's stuck. However, the one on top is liable to be eagle chow. If the eagle lands in that zone, you would be eating the top one. Or if there were many different uh, lemmings around the area, he would choose which one. Basically, you want your lemming to get to the end of the board where there's a cliff. And right before the cliff, when a movement card is played, Let's say you get a, you're at the end of the board and the movement card's a five. That's awesome. That means you jump off the cliff from the end of the board with a five. That was a spectacular dive. That lemming would be there in the five and you just scored yourself five points. You've got a favor track where you keep track of your clan's favor. The person at the end of the game with the most favor wins. There's many different factors, like these little action cards can force people to uh, do things like go backward or other things. Also, once per game, you can use your clan card and turn it over and automatically make a dive of five, no matter what. Once that's used, it's used. The pellets, let's say you're on a on a hex with a pellet. 
When it's your turn to move again, you willingly move off that spot. You take with you the pellet. Okay? Now, you take the pellet and look at it yourself. Secretly, you know you've got one victory point. Now, the ones that say favor on them, you can exchange. On your turn, before you move, you can cash in X amount of favor points for different things. For instance, the cost of one favor point gets you the increased whatever the movement card is you increase your movement for your clan by one which you can't go more than five that cost one pellet and that would go in the f exchange favor pellets area now for two pellets you can bribe the judges let's say you were at the edge of the cliff and the uh, the movement card was a one you jumped off with a point of one well for costing two of the favors you can bribe the judges to increase that score by one, but again, you can't go past five. Or you can pay three pellets, and you can randomly get another action card. So, with all that said and done out of the way, this can make for a crazy game of people trying to make a mad dash for the end, and rolling dice, and you got the pellets to worry about, and your friends going on top of you and making it to these uh, hexes that have the bushes I mean it's for me it's a great game it's a frantic crazy fun little game we're kind of mixed on this I really enjoy the game I think it's got a lot of potential it's a lot of fun um, if played with three or more people it can be fast paced and I had a different opinion <clears throat> I thought it was a very slow moving game. It did not keep me interested. Um, I just, for me, it's it's not something that I would bring out to play or, you know, if my friends were ever go, hey, let's play Leaping Lemmings. It's just, I was bored with the game. I didn't enjoy it at all. I disagree. I think that a lot of the reason she didn't like it was that she was playing with children. Our children were are 10 and 7, and they take a long time to make a decision of where they want to move. They're trying to plot it out. So I think that's the reason. I think with, with older people playing, it can be quite fun and challenging and <laughs> making spectacular leaps off the cliff. We do agree on the same that it is a very well-made game. The parts in there are exquisite. The everything from the packaging to the dice. They feel good in your hands. We just differ on opinion on